Sydney has quite incredible marine life for a large city. You see an awful lot. We have a few shark species that are quite common here, Port Jacksons and Wobbegongs. But my personal favourite are the cephalopods, the, the cuttlefish and the octopus. I'm John Turnbull, I'm the East Coast Coordinator for Reef Life Survey. I learned to dive quite a long time ago, but then I stopped because I sort of thought, oh, there's not that much to see where I live around home in Sydney, you know, it's a big city. And I had the view back then that you really had to travel to other places to see cool marine life. In more recent years, I've started to get back into diving and I realised, no, actually, Sydney has quite amazing marine life, but I didn't really know what it was. I couldn't identify all the fish species, for example. I got involved in Reef Life Survey about eight years ago. Uh, I was doing research into the marine environment and how it is viewed by humans. And the Reef Life Survey program was a great way for me to get out in the water, uh, contribute to something positive, but also learn myself about the species and the ecosystem. Here in Sydney, we survey pretty much all year round because we have a dedicated team of volunteers and they just love getting out in the water and they like doing surveys. So we have data coming in all year round, but it's a steady trickle. And then once a year, we try to really do an intensive session of a few weeks where we hit all the sites, as, much, as many sites as possible. And that means that every year we have that big chunk of data that we can compare year on year. Ten years ago, they did a big circuit around Australia using a whole variety of small boats they could get their hands on and shore diving. And they studied about 500 sites all the way around Australia. Fast forward now, 10 years later, thanks to funding by the Ian Potter Foundation, we're now able to repeat that and do what we're calling the Lap of Oz. Here in Sydney, that's about 40 sites that we're coming back to. Uh, normally in a year we would survey about 25, but this year we're doing the additional ones that maybe haven't been done for 10 years. And that allows scientists to look at that decade of change. What has changed over the last 10 years, not just in Sydney, but all the way around Australia. But the other thing that we're seeing is we're starting to see the impacts of climate change in, in Sydney as well, particularly on kelp forests. So the kelp forests are getting smashed by storms, they're being affected by pollution, but also the warm water coming down on the East Australian current. That combination of factors is weakening the kelp and the kelp forests are starting to thin out and look a bit sick. Uh, and that has flow on effects, you know, those forests are food and shelter for many species. On land, if there was a forest over there and, and the trees were dying or the animals were disappearing, everyone would know in this local area. Whereas out here, under the water, it's a bit out of sight and out of mind. But to me, the big hope that I have is that the combined efforts of hundreds of volunteers will give us a much better view of what's really happening with the marine environment. And if you don't have that data, if you can't show a trend, it's very hard to then argue the case with managers and government agencies that we should be protecting things. So to me, the big thing I hope is much more data coming from all those efforts leading to much better decisions to conserve what we have. In 50 years time, I'd like to think that what we're doing contributes to better protection and better marine life.